Dreams start with thoughts and creative minds turn those thoughts into works of art. On an earlier show, we asked if art can save lives. Why do recording artists and filmmakers do what they do? We host Grammy award-winning artist, activist, and co-creator of Donda's House, Che Ryan Best Smith, and filmmaker, he's awesome, graphic artist, Coney Rock, on Counterpoint with Gerard McClendon. Yeah, yeah, that's how I found you. That's the work of Coney Rock. That's Breakthrough. That's Coney Rock. And that's Che Ryan Fest Smith. Thank you for joining us on Counterpoint Call or text me at 844-777-9311. You can tweet me at Gerard MC. You can also send Facebook comments to Counterpoint Gerard. Joining me at the Counterpoint Grammy Award winning recording artist Che Ryan Fest Smith and awesome filmmaker extraordinaire graphic artist Coney Rock. Gentlemen, what's up today? What's up? Y'all doing brother? all right How today? Oh man, Coney Rock gave me a pound already. Hey, you know what? <laughs> We've been talking about this series on art saving lives and I know that the two of you have put out such an amazing body of work, whether it's film, um, emceeing, battle rapping, you're recording artists, you've done that work. Writing, uh, Coney Rock, graphic artists, cartoons, filmmaking, just amazing work. Let's talk about art saving a life though. Can art save a person's life or can it save the artist's life? Any of you two gentlemen. Well, well you know, it's, I think it's important to know, Gerard, that Coney Rock and I have known each other since 14, 15 years old. So here we are 40 years old and still creating together. Uh, when our journey started and he first kind of picked up a camera, you know, we were going through things where he would call and tell me, you know, this person really said this and that about me and this and that. And, and, I, and I say, you know, don't worry about that. Let's, just, let's beat them with success. Let's make another video. Let's, so when we talk about art saving lives, I believe that it has to be for the art, for the personal conflict resolution. One of the issues we have now is art versus uh, public consumption, mm -hmm. versus uh, monetary gain. Uh, Coney Rock and I came up doing art because it was a way of self-medicating. It was, it was therapy for us as young people, white and black, two different parts of town of Chicago, but had visual and audio art in common. We collaborated and we have a 30-year friendship, you know you, what I mean? You, this, this is big because Coney Rock, you know, looking at your work, it's a little bit different than other artists' work. You got graphic artists, you have people who do comic, you also have people who do filmmaking, but your work is like this amalgamation. At a young age, man, did art save your life? I mean, it's pretty much set in stone like what I was gonna do from the beginning since I was a little drawing and taking things from my mind and, and putting it on paper so I could show other people. Like, yeah, because um, those are the things that, that set direction for me versus things that are, were around, like, you know, kids with no, no goal and no focus, but just doing other things, like getting in trouble and stuff. For me, I always had the simplest thing that didn't cost any money, just paper and pencil and in front of me. So I would, that, say, I would say so, yeah. Was that your first medium? Uh, drawing was that your first medium? Yeah, I said yeah, drawing, comic books, drawing. Yeah. And then what did it? Did, what what came out of the drawing? Any other types of art? Yeah, uh, well, from drawing led to to wanting to do more animation, getting a hold of a video camera when I was you know like 10, 11, 
just trying to do my animation, setting up a camera and, and drawing pictures, making, I remember drawing Michael Jackson moonwalking and, <laughs> and uh, uh, doing stop motion with like Terminator t toys and like just, um, uh, just trying to get it out. It was in my head and I got a tool to get it out. That's heavy. Now yeah. see, he, he already went there, Che. Just get it out. It's in my head. So many people say what they want to do but they never get it out of here. Mm -hmm. So what do you think some of the barriers are for people to just say, you know what, I'm going to do this? Well, I think the barriers are what we create, mm -hmm. not what currently exists. I think one of the important things Coney said was, it was in my head and I got a tool to get it out. And the tool he spoke of was pencil and paper. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So that was a tool for him to pick those ideas out of his head. I believe that uh, whenever a problem is created, simultaneously a solution is created. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we concentrate so hard on the problem, we never look at the solution that was created at the same time as the problem. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, for me, how much did it cost me to write raps, to make poetry, to find an audience for my ideas? The audience was my community, who was also the inspiration. Yeah, yeah. You know, Coney, uh, when I look at your work, it is, uh, it's inspiring, it is tear-jerking at times, and it really shows the true manifestation of what an artist can do when it comes to possibility. So I'm referring to like the videos, uh, uh, does it say what, where you're, it's cartooning, I'm referring to the Chicago video that you did for Rhyme Fest. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, uh, is it City is Falling? Yeah. Oh my goodness. Okay. So it, it, it's funny because you can kind of tell that the two of you have this amalgamation of artistic uh, output because when I watch the videos that you've done for artists, it's like that's what the artist was probably trying to convey. And so often when I see videos, there's this disconnect, Coney. It's like, wait a minute, I'm listening to the lyric, I'm, look, I'm listening to the artist, <laughs> I'm looking at the video, and they aren't connected, Coney Rock. How do you get to that connection, man, where I'm looking at this fan spinning and city is falling, and I'm feeling sorry for Ryan Fest. How do, <laughs> <laughs> how do you how do you connect with the artists and get that filmmaking out, brother? Well, you gotta feel sorry for, for them from the beginning. <laughs> but, uh, uh, well, it's uh, um, well probably like working with different people um, and working with Fest. Like yeah. he said. You know, when he, when he did his second album and he did it all independently, and we're, we kind of went in, and there were, was really no resources. We were just like, we were just driven by like art, really just love and wanting to do something. And um, when the resources were, were taken away, that's when we really got gritty and just like got stuff done. Mm -hmm. And at a, after we had done like seven videos in a row, we were just dropping them. I remember like having a discussion on the phone, we were talking about new ideas and stuff. And then, we and I don't know if he said it or I said it, but we, we came up with like, man, we're actually a group. Like yeah. Pete Rock and CL Smooth is a group. Yes. It's like Ryan Fitz and Coney Rock is like a group because we have like a symbiosis that comes from, I think, our, our love and respect for not just art and like concepts, but like meaning behind things. Yeah. And like, not just that, but why. Like, why are, why are we doing something? Like, touching that emotion. And, and I, I think it's yeah. important also to say that Coney shot one of the last videos for Fife Dog oh. before his passing. And in the video, uh, he connected, Fife was trying to exercise and get through his diabetes, which was ultimately his demise, which I think, you know, it goes to show that the art that, at least that Coney Rock does, comes from more of a humanistic struggle than it does a commercialized a yeah. uh, uh, profit type of type of thing, and so you know, it, it's just very interesting. And in, in our film in my father's house, much of the footage that we have. Oh, crap. 
crap, man. I'm it's sorry. okay. I'm it's sorry. okay because you know what? You're an artist, and we're gonna. You know what? Put that camera back on me I real quick. Put off. that camera on me. See, I'm, I'm with happened. Coney Rock and J. Ron and Smith. And let me tell you something happen. about cell phones going off during a television show. <laughs> no. They have to because I am they on don't. panel with two amazing artists today. I got Coney Rock <laughs> filmmaker, and I got J. Ryan Fest Smith. And then you, have the, you know what? You can cut the camera back to Che right now because I'm going to talk about him. Yeah, he has a Grammy job. Award. He has a Golden Globe Award. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He has an Oscar for writing the song Glory, Glory yeah. uh, for John Legend and for and Common. Common. Mm -hmm. And he wrote Jesus Walks for Kanye West. Mm -hmm. So you have the right, brother, no. for your cell phone to go off no. during my show. The, the, problem, <laughs> the problem is Android versus Apple. Like Apple, you know, it's going to be cut off. Android is, I'm sorry, should I not be disappointed? No, it's all good. Yeah, but like, like you, you know, but I, what, what I wanted to say is that much of the, the footage for our film in my father's house came from Coney Rock just shooting my life over a period from 14 to 37 years old. So when we needed that back in the day footage, Coney has filmed that on, on Chicago history that is just locked away in a vault like Prince, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And, and, and that's love. I think artists who are in love with their trade, the best stuff, the most intriguing stuff mm. the public may never see mm. because life is art to them, yeah. not just what you see from them. You know, uh, is it one hand or one arm push up? That's a good question. Is it yeah. one arm push up? One arm. You know, one arm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the first time I saw that video, I must have sent it, I sent that link to like everybody that I knew. I said, dude, you got to see this. <laughs> Ryan Fest is doing push ups with one arm. With one, I, I, this is like, and he's doing other stuff with his other hand. Goni, where does that come from, man? So, uh, you, 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 <laughs> he came up with the whole idea. So, we're, it's the dopest part about that, and it really goes. Um, that's the last video we did for El Che for the his second album, and and we had done like so many things. We're like, we we needed like so many ideas to come up to do a, a video for every song because that was our goal. So, I had this in my head like, I just want to make you do a push up nonstop with no cuts, right? That was the original idea. Just uh, making you do a one-arm push-up. And I'm like, I time. can't, I can't do one. <laughs> I was like, don't worry, we're gonna figure it out. Let's just, 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 just love the idea. Power then, but the dope thing is that like, I called him one day to talk about that when he was working on the album. And I was like, yeah, I wanna make you do a one-arm push-up. And then he's like, yo, I'm on the way to the studio. I got this dope S1 beat. I'm gonna make that the song. So I told him about the idea for, for a video with no song. He went to the studio, he made a song, came back like, this is the song. I was like, oh snap. So then planned the video out and then, and then it got done. We were a group. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, I, and I think, but, but what that yeah. talks to Gerard is when you're doing art, art is not made alone in a silo by yourself. Art is collaboration. And I don't, I don't know that any effective art, especially community art, mm -hmm. can be done uh, alone. Yeah, let's hold that thought because I want to ask the audience this. Are you a filmmaker, singer? Could you be an MC or a graphic artist? Are you a Rhyme Fest or a Coney Rock fan? Hey, here are a few of your Facebook comments. Brenda Owen says, I saw Rhyme Fest at the Music Box Theater. His story about finding his father made me cry. Shayla Taylor on Facebook says, the Raekwon and Fife Dog videos that Coney made were different than most videos that you see. I still watch them today. I miss Fife Dog. The Coney Rock video is true prophecy. And The Real on Facebook says, I was there when Ryan Fest beat Eminem in a freestyle battle at the Scribble Fest. He said, off the top of the dome, Ryan Fest is incredible. Wow, hey, thanks for the comments, voice your concerns, and we the people. Hey, call or text me, 844-777-9311. Tweet me at Gerard MC and Facebook to Counterpoint Gerard. Hold tight, we'll be back shortly. Tweet me, post on Instagram, or send me a message on Facebook. Let's start the conversation. Your voice is important on Counterpoint. This ain't the last time I see you do time. 
That's my word, I'ma see you. Front and ass rappers down here still in issue. Posing like they hard when we know they all see cool. I'ma tell you, Dilla, why they lacking skills, pal. No stage presence, cadence, style. They living off the hooks. Skinny jean crooks, pre K lyrics. What one I need a book? I reminisce, reminisce. When Mob Drop shook, Shan was down by law. Such a good look. Nas got son and his return was still mad. It boosted source in the static. You win slum fantastic. Thought I chopped you out, son. See how you doing? Come back to earth, homie. Hip hop is in ruins. I'm a third of the top, but I'ma speak for the click. What up, though? We miss you, kid. Mama City say. JD, flip another beat for me. JD. JD, flip another beat for me. JD. Wow, wow. I missed that, brother. Man, that's, that's, uh, that's kind of hard to watch and beautiful at the same time. Welcome back to Counterpoint. Ryan Fest and Coney Rock and the creative process. Gentlemen, um, wow, man. Tribe Called Quest, uh, Dear Dilla, Fife Dog, um, Battle with Diabetes. Coney Rock, you were blessed to have the opportunity, man, to uh, work on Fife Dog's video, man. What, what was that like? And, um, well, I originally met Tribe Called Quest first when when Che did a, uh, a, the Bounce Tour, I think in 2008. I think that's the first time I, I actually met them. And then uh, Fife came to Chicago to do a show for Puma. And um, uh, I just, um, oh, it's funny because my friend uh, from my breaking crew, Chicago Tribe, he asked me to, to uh, film a, a breaking battle that was gonna happen before that. So I was there for the breaking battle and Fife was on that show. Mm. So it ended up being a thing where I would, I would interview Fife and also film his show. And then I was backstage and um, we had done all of everything. It was the end of the night, Fife was just chilling. And I was like, hey man, I wonder like, what, what he's up to now. I haven't heard any new Tribe Called Quest music. Is he making music? I didn't even know. I was like, it'd be really nice to do a video for mm. him. Maybe I'll ask him. And then uh, I was walking by and I was gonna ask him, but he was talking to someone. I was like, I don't, I don't wanna be rude, forget it. I'll just go home. Left the venue, I was like, oh man, I forgot my camera bag. Forgot my camera, so I ran back in, got my camera, and the person wasn't talking to Fife anymore. I was like, I'll talk to Fife, and then that was it. He like talked to my manager, started texting that night after at the club. They were they were wanting to do something. Then over two years, they sent me beats. What do you think of this? What do you think of that? And then after a couple of years, they sent one day they sent the Dear Dilla beat. Said they wanted to do this. What would you do? Sketched them something up. They liked it. They booked a flight to Chicago. We're, we're shooting here. We're shooting Detroit. Shot it and. It was amazing. That's serendipity. That's why you have to be present in all situations. You have to, you know, sniff around. You got to keep your eyes open. You have to be aware at all times, you know. And it was serendipitous, and it was not a coincidence for you to forget that camera. <laughs> I you, think that, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, that, that's, that's for real. You know, let me ask you this. Um, on your website, it says that Coney Rock is a b-boy. What does that mean, man? I know what it means, but you gotta tell my audience, man. Why do you have that on your website? Uh, well, because I, I mean, I, I have been, and I, and I, I might not be what I'm do, doing, what I'm doing now, if, and I might not have met some of my best friends if not for that, yeah. for breaking, and I, I still break. We had practice last night. Yeah. So, um, break. How old are you again? Right now? Yeah. 37. 37, yeah. and you can break dance? I mean, <laughs> I got a big table here. Yeah, I got a big table here. This is all good. See, you know what I like? Uh, it, it seems like the two of you are brothers, man. I mean, I'm talking biological because, you know, there's, there's a kinship here and there's a love of art. And so many people get into the business for fame, for fortune for respect of other people. They get into the business just to be liked. They get into the business so that they can uh, reign power over people. But the two of you, you love art. You know, the other day, so my wife and I, were at the Art Institute. And it, it hits me all the time how powerful art is. You don't have to watch a music video or see a film. We're at the Art Institute. The Van Gogh exhibit is there, bedrooms. There's a line around the building just to see a few paintings, you know? Che, what is that, man? Where, where's, what's it, where's that coming from? Well, I think that happens when you have a community that values that 
type of art, right? I think that that's why it's important to teach art. So when you look at what we do at Donda's house, <clears throat> what the work that we do at Donda's house is not just making art, it's teaching art. I'll give you an example. I'll never forget the first time I ever met Ramsey Lewis. He asked me who my favorite jazz player was. I said, I don't really like jazz. And he went crazy. He was like, the problem with young people today is you. And it, but, but, but it took me years to realize I didn't like jazz because I was never taught the language of jazz. Yes. Jazz is a language that you have to learn in order to understand the value yeah. of what that piano is saying, what that horn is saying. Yeah. So no one ever taught me that language. One of the problems we're having in a lot of black communities mm -hmm. is that we're not being taught the language of our traditional art forms. Mm -hmm. So what happens is young people are artists in you, and so we just make it up. Yeah. And, and art becomes just throwing colors on the wall instead of speaking ancient languages through drum, mm. speaking ancient languages through horn, through sound, through voice. And so I think when they look at that Van Gogh painting, the people who lined up around the corner had generations of, of teaching and educating centered around Van Gogh, yeah. the same way you have around Broadway. Uh, in a lot of our communities, we don't have Second City. We don't have things on the west and south sides of Chicago that teach the language of art. And in many homes, the mother and dad is not even there to teach you the language of music. Mm. So that's why Donda's house is in play. But I, to, to your point, though, Gerardo, I just think that they appreciate the art through education. Got you. Donda's house was created. Why? Donda's house was created because Dr. Donda West, who's the mother of Kanye West, was a mentor. She was the dean of the English department. Uh, at Chicago State University, but she was also a mentor to Kanye's friends. She became a surrogate mother to many of us, including myself. And so we created Donda's House to honor the legacy of Fulbright scholar Dr. Donda West, mm. who taught me many things about life through art. Yeah, yeah, you're the co-creator of Donda's House along mm. with uh, uh, Donnie. With my wife, Donnie Smith, and with Kanye West. Yeah. And, you know, it, it's so... Yeah. It's so eerie yeah. how my wife, Donnie, is so closely named the Donda, and how the young people I see from Donda's house look at my wife, how I look at Dr. Donda West. There's a magnetism there, and I think that your organization is truly uh, looking at doing great work helping that 16 to 24 year old. 14. 14? 14, 14, 14 to 24. 24 yes. Which is that, that's that X factor, that missing link, that's what Coney Rock, a lot of young people need to be introduced to some sort of art so they can start creating rather than killing people. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, uh, if you were to give classes, Coney, the great Coney Rock, what would you teach in? Would it be drawing, filmmaking? What, what might it be? I would, I would probably just focus on trying to get something in your mind to, to, a, to a tangible place. So I'd teach somebody how to, um, how to, because a lot of times, in your mind you create obstacles that aren't really there that limit you from getting something out. So I would mm. show them how simple it is to get something from your mind to, you know, to a, a piece of paper or to a camera uh, rather than, because um, like, I just remember um, this guy Matt Woodburn at Columbia College. Uh, he was like an older person. I and then, Matt. Yeah. <laughs> but but uh, I was on an elevator and I, I was filming like this documentary on Chicago hip hop with a little like terrible camera, you know, and then, and then I was like, yeah, I'm making. A, he's like, oh, what are you doing? I was like, oh yeah, I'm making this documentary. I was like, yeah, but this is all I have. He's like, he's like, you know what? That doesn't matter. All that means is that's just your look, bro. I was like, yeah, right. It's my, it's my look. He's like, <laughs> he's like, it's an artistic choice, right? But I just never forgot that uh, he told me that, and it was like, yeah, like. There, there's no limits, man. There's no limit because yeah, someone's gonna look at that. They're, they're gonna look at what's in something. They're not gonna look at like that, you know. But now you got yeah. people shooting movies on iPhones. Yes. Right. I was gonna say that. Like, much, much of them, my father's house was shot off an iPad. Wow. People don't know that. You don't have to know that. There's a whole industry in Japan now where they, there's Japanese filmmakers. They 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 put these iPhones on dollies and cranes mm -hmm. and everything and the work is just magnificent man that's your look i like that that's, your look. that's my look 
<laughs> so, so what did? But well, we got to be careful with that. Shit, look. <laughs> we yeah. got to be careful. You need that a camera. That's careful. my. We always, <laughs> like, we always you know, want. We always want to graduate to something a little bit better. I never wear pants. That's my look. <laughs> no, that's not your look. That's not your, You might get arrested for that. But I like that slogan. I like that phrase because yeah. what it says is value yourself first. Then the external value will come. But if you don't, if you don't value that little camera, if you don't value the pencil that you're drawing with. The power. The, yeah. Yeah, if, if, and if you can't, if you don't get that vision out, the world will be starved from not having it. Man, this, this is powerful stuff. Uh, I, I got about 30 seconds left. Coney, word of advice, man. Give me 10 seconds. Word of advice to the young up and coming artist. If you got, land, if you got dust all over your lens, embrace it. Make, make that a thing, make that intentional, make that about, make, make it about the dust. Yeah. Like turn that, like you're like, you shot something, there's dust all over. You're like, damn. I did it on purpose. Make it your strength. Yep. That's, That's, awesome. That's my look. Jay, 10 <laughs> seconds, man. Yeah, uh, advice. Yeah, yeah. Share your truth. Don't share the truth of anybody else's. Don't try to pretend to be someone else to be successful. If you share your truth, that's a unique story and that's a great piece of art. Hey, what are you afraid of? Go be a filmmaker, an MC activist, and a graphic artist. The only thing holding you back is you. Thanks to Ryan Fest and Coney Rock for joining me at the Counterpoint Call. Text me 844-777-9311. Tweet me, Gerard MC, and comment on Facebook at Counterpoint Gerard. Stay positive. I need you to keep your head up and always be encouraged to voice your Counterpoint. Have a great week.